Welcome to the Kennedy Events Podcast, where we feature top marketing, communications, and future of work leaders and share their biggest takeaways and insights. We love these conversations and hope you will too. Let's get started. Welcome to the Kennedy Events Podcast, where we uncover the future of bringing people together through the eyes of industry leaders. Whether that's retaining top talent for your business, attracting your ideal partners, or retaining your best customers, learn from professionals who have been there and done it so you can too. Past guests include John Silva of Culinary Eye, Avital Unger of Avital Food and Drink Experiences, and Elaine Honig of Studio 440. I'm your host, Paige Buck, and I am pleased to have with me today, Lawrence Aravayo, the owner and operator of Verducci Event Productions. Hi, Lawrence. Hey, how's it going, Paige? It's yeah. actually pronounced Arevalo. It's a tough one. Like Arevalo. Thank you for Arevalo. correcting me. That would have been... right. No problem. I love it. Arevalo. I'm, I'm like yeah. reframing that in my mind right now. Okay, let me tell folks about your company and then we'll dive in. Yeah. Um, yeah. Verducci is an event production company whose mission is to use technology, talent, and customer service for their guests to create lasting memories, inspire positive change in the world, and achieve their dreams. For over 10 years, you've helped build the business, scaling it to, I'm sure this figure has changed, over $2 million in sales. And of all your many talents, you're also a proud father of two, and you're married to a rock star nurse. Is that right? That's right. Absolutely right. Yeah. Amazing. And then before we get going, today's episode is brought to you by Kennedy Events. We create stress-free conferences and events providing expert management and design for all your corporate event needs from in-person to hybrid and virtual. And of course, you can find us at kennedyevents.com. So Lawrence, our businesses obviously have a lot of overlap and we we're often work hand in glove with companies like yours, but you've got all these different like business lines that came like out of your creative brain. How did these get started? And, and tell, tell me what they are. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. Absolutely. Well, you know, uh, we've been in business for God, about 13 or 14 years. And so I think over that time, you know, a small business will pull different levers and turn different keys trying to see what works. And so we started a DJ company because we we both are uh, Andrew, my business partner and I are both DJ and we love music and we love people. And so, like, I think just our um, our characteristics and, and our love comes out and just serving and serving people. So we started a DJ company and we grew it um, to about 15 DJs at some point and it was rocking and rolling and we were super busy every weekend, every Saturday, Sunday, we were just rip roaring, but we didn't have any business during the week. So we kind of had these expenses um, and, and, you know, a lot of like really big peaks. And so we came across a couple of challenges. One was we had staff that loved to work for us doing like lighting setups or photo booths or things like that that were adjacent to our dj business but they were like hey we love you guys but you don't have any work for us all week so like sometimes we're going to be available sometimes we're not and and so we one challenge we wanted to address was how do we get these people working more because we love them too and we want to you know keep supplying them with work so that they're available when we need them um so after about five years of just exclusively running the dj business we decided uh we wanted to branch out and explore a little bit more. We were doing a lot of weddings at the time, a ton mm-hmm. of weddings, um, which is great. Uh, but we also saw that there was an opportunity to do a lot of corporate work. And we just had our heads down, focused on building this like this one thing. But once we opened our eyes a little bit more, we realized, one, I have an audiovisual background. I did it all through college. I managed a conference mm-hmm. center for Nestle. Like That wow. was my, my background before I even started the DJ company. We had all this gear that was kind of just like sitting in a warehouse all week long, not being used. And we had the opportunity, you know, to increase our revenue, to serve more customers, to get people working more. And so we went at it and we uh, started to do corporate audiovisual production and support. Um, And, you know, that grew our business really fast. We like doubled, um, you know, grew 100 percent a few years in a row, just adding that additional service and then we grew and we grew and we grew um and we you know i joined um entrepreneurs organization during that time i learned a lot we put in um a lot of systems and you know values and we really focused on on our people um 
because at some point we were growing so fast it felt like the wheels were going to come off and that everybody was just like unhappy you know so we tried to figure that out like i said pulling a lot of different levers so we we had the original you know kind of um business of djing uh that we, we kept going after five or six years you know it, it becomes easier to operate that sort of thing and then we focused on av a little bit heavier and that became something we became really good at so now we've got two things after maybe like 10 years that are really we're really good at um and then during covid we you know just like everybody we we have to find new ways to make revenue um so we we did a lot of virtual production which was pretty new to us at the time but like we had a couple of years to just you know leverage our our audio visual skills and our um, customer service skills to just nail that and we loved that that portion we're still doing some of that today um, Absolutely. But then we also found a neat companies that were hiring us for virtual also had a need for video production. And it just so happened that like one of the people that used to work for us was looking for some opportunities. He owned a video production company. So we partnered up with him. His name is Jesse. He's awesome. Amazing. Just totally in line with how Andrew and I operate our business from customer service to like the friendliness and the professionalism. So during covid we just found each other in this place and so we started a, a new line of business which is um video production uh, and, and during covid we really were able to help some nonprofits and um, some large companies get their get videos produced which was amazing um, and now we're focusing on a new spin on that video production company and i want to ask you about that in a minute so you said yeah so from dj which was like i just love the energy like it's like a completely different vibe than our very like logistical buttoned up uh love to have fun <laughs> love to have fun but it's a different kind of fun uh team to your uh like dj live event energy to av yeah. to virtual which if if it's anything like our experience you were we were all learning it afresh together, but then it, like you just said, opened up a bunch of opportunities. Yep. And now this video opportunity, this new, this new thing, what, how did you identify this opportunity and, and where's it going? Yeah. I mean, we had, um, another strategic partner, another uh, planning event planning firm that hired us to do virtual during, uh, COVID and we love working with them. They love working with us. And so they had, an opportunity for one of their clients, Asana, um, who, you know, had some values videos that they wanted produced. They had um, some kind of back to work, like this is at the, a bit of a turn of COVID uh, videos that they wanted produced. And we even helped them with a, with like an external marketing project. So we did a lot of work with Asana, which was great and proved to us right away that we were you know, our video production side was ready to jump in with larger companies. Mm -hmm. um, we also had some previous contacts at Google and they were hiring us for some virtual stuff. And so we were like, hey, we're doing this too. And that was working out, they were coming back. So we we're like, okay, we're doing a good job. Like, so we obviously like, if we can work with these big companies and do a great job, we work with some nonprofits to help them produce their like mission videos. And so we just were like, hey, we can do this other yes. side as well. Like we, you know, this is something that, and you know, people are looking for good vendors and we know we have confidence that we care enough that we're a good vendor and we're a good partner. So, you know, I feel like that was important. And I feel like that care that you're talking about goes to the heart of it's one of your big differentiators. I think it, it sounds like both your brand promise and your company's values help you like attract awesome team members and attract clients who value those qualities in people so tell me a little bit about the brand promise and yeah yeah what it does for you yeah we were talking about this a little bit you know before the the show start but yeah I, again i i think i owe a lot of the maturity of the business to my time in, in entrepreneurs organization um through that like I, I learned a ton i met a bunch of really inspiring people and we actually hired a coach a guy named dan clifford he's awesome he's in um He's an EO coach, but then he also has a private firm. So he came on and coached us during a time that it felt really turbulent in the business. Like I said, that growth can do so much to make people feel, you know, um, leaned on and stressed. And it wasn't just our employees. Like we were also feeling the same way. Like we were just trying to figure it out. Like we hadn't spent a bunch of time on values and, and growing our relationships with each other and 
um, things were just moving so fast and we're like, yes, we'll take that project. And yes, we'll take that project. And, and then it was just like, all right, you know, you're sleeping in the warehouse tonight and I'm sleeping there with you. And like, you know, <laughs> we're going to make this happen tomorrow. And, you know, it was like that. And, that, and that's how the event industry can get. It's re it can oh, yeah. get really, really brutal and really busy and, at certain times. And so um, we're pretty also like, you know, pretty sensitive to how people are feeling. Like we, I, I feel like we have a pretty good emotional IQ. So like you could just tell our employees, we're like, we love you guys, but like, this is crazy. So it just felt like it was time to, to implement some, some, you know, some actual values. Like, I, I don't think we ever even really did that while the company was just growing and moving. Um, and then just, yeah, that, that, yeah, just more like investment in operations and, and, you know, strategy and growing people and giving and giving more of the work away, like trusting people more to do things instead of trying to hold on to it and giving people minimal insight. So things really started to go well, like once we had Dan come in to help us, but he, he helped us identify, um, I don't know if it's necessarily a brand promise, but I feel like it is, is that we're the friendly, trustworthy people to get all the details right. And he was like, after observing you guys, you know, friendly for sure like trustworthy, definitely. And those details, like that's what we, we care about so much. I mean, I was had a meeting with my partner just a couple of minutes ago about like the smallest details on moving some up like oh, yeah. for a floor plan, like just the littlest things. And so um, those, those became core kind of tenants in our business. And then we, um, we also developed values with our coach and um, with our team. And those became things that we, you know, we really lived and we, we had to, you know, kind of implement some rewards and just some recognition based on those and really spend time at every team meeting and with our team leads and, you know, just making sure everybody knew the values, they understood them. We even did a, a contest where we had uh, everybody in the company could come up with an acronym um, to help us remember the values yes. and the winner. Yeah. The winner uh, was a, uh, was this guy named Dylan? He he was our project manager at the time, and uh, and he came up with party cat party cats and party hats electrify, and uh, and that helped us. The P H party hats A and party cats P C electrify because our values are people first, um, healthy communication, accountability, positivity constant improvement and excellence. So taking the first letter of all of those. And party cats, party hats and party cats electrified. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I've been meaning to do this acronym exercise with ours. I think our team knows ours pretty well, but the acronym is just fun. And then, it's fun. And then it feels also like the acronym ties back to who you are as well. Like yeah, it totally. looks a little bit totally. like your, it, it evokes your brand and the look of your website and yeah there's really good energy in there as well and i, I know some yeah. people in like our clients might wonder like that's nice but what do those core values have to do with me and i think you know you kn you know what you're getting when you get us you know you don't just know like oh these people know how to operate the equipment but i know what sort right. of personality i'm getting what my day-to-day -day interaction is going to look like with you what the yeah. experience of every step of the process is going to be because you've told me who you are. Yeah. And, and also it's like what you hire by. Yes. I mean, unfortunately, it's what you also fire by. Fire by. It's, yep. it's, it's what you, you know, reward and, you know, it's what you, you know, all of that stuff is, is your value. So like, you know, say for instance, one of our values is, um, is positivity, right? Events are super stressful. So we need people to be positive in, so like the whole value goes like this. It goes, be enthusiastic and positive when addressing challenges and opportunities. So, so like positivity is like, okay, we've got this thing. Um, the skirt for the stage is not right. Okay. I can either be really upset and be like, nothing's ever good. I hate this. You know, like this client is like pushing on me or, Hey, you know, we need a change in our PowerPoint. Like right now it can be like, what? Or it could be like, okay, sounds good. Like bring it over. We'll get it done. You yeah. know? And so that's like, that's what we try to push with these values. It's not just this, you know, piece of paper that's on the wall or something you get in your email. It's really like what we're hiring for. We want people that can come in and be positive in stressful situations or, you know, handle these, these um, challenges with 
a smile because honestly that's what we would do andrew and i would like you know would be like okay cool let's do it let's figure it out and that's part of the growth right that's part of that if you have values and you're hiring in hiring and firing from this and you're attracting like-minded people because you're so transparent about this that in turn lets you do what you were saying before about like trusting them more giving them more of the work getting yourself up into a different focus on whether it's biz yeah. dev or yeah absolutely growth opportunities i love that and you know dan i interviewed dan here a couple of weeks ago and so i'll have to pass on your praise and good uh i've learned so much from him as well as a, as yeah. a trainer uh it's really great to hear what he did for Verducci. that's really he, cool. he knows we he knows we love him he, he, knows, he knows he doesn't he doesn't need the praise <laughs> <laughs> so you've got some really good projects that you've just done that you're super excited about. Tell me about what yeah, you just yeah. recently did for Google. Yeah, absolutely. So we did a two day offsite in Monterey for Google. Um, it was for Assistant, the product Assistant, which is the like, hey, Google. Um, and it was all the director level folks that work on that product. It was a really great high end event. So we did all the audiovisual for it. We did stage video walls we had three video walls we Mm. did the lighting for it um all the audio we had um you know they had a bunch of people coming up from all of their teams to kind of explain what they'd been working on but we did it really like ted talk style um so it was a lot of logistics we had a day of load in which like i love that if there's any event people listening right now for your production team we had a day of load in we had a day of rehearsal and we had a perfect show so that's that's a lot different than like you've got a day a half a day of load in and we need you to be rehearsing like midday and then like we're going live the next morning like that extra time and those additional resources really helped us as a team to go through every single powerpoint every single video workout like where okay this video is not playing you know we need to so that whole rehearsal day helped us to click as a team because in our world in av sometimes you're the people that you want to use might be on a different show. So mm-hmm. like I had to fly, fly a few people in, you know, they were people that I had worked with before or, um, but they may not have worked with each other, right? So that like team gelling, that muscle memory of pushing all the buttons and doing all the things. By the time we were into that show the next day, we were we were rocking and rolling, so. That's I amazing. Mean, That's, a, I mean, yeah, that also awesome. you're just, you're, I feel like you're like poking at an open wound right now because we've got two big shows in the next month where the client had already signed the venue contract without that load-in day oh wow yeah so we're having fun times fun time late night (laughs) late nights and you know trying to like squeeze all that in anywhere we can i do think that's one of the nice things about what you know a silver lining of covid tell me if you've had this where we were talking about how you could really level up um production because oh well in some ways like people were captive uh, but they needed everything to be absolutely perfect minute to minute and you could command the sort of rehearsal time cross checks extra equipment extra people that you need to run that level of like live television production and now that we're back to live some clients really value like they got hooked on that and they want it and they can't go back to a more rushed, less uh, polished, uh, you know, production. So you're, you get the value of like, yeah, we will get you that full load in day. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, no, I I 100% agree. We were talking about it. And yeah, COVID, I think those virtual productions were more like TV broadcasts. And so if somebody's like a total captive audience to their screen, then you're right, everything does have to be perfect. If there's a little glitch, like, it you feel it you know if a video is like missed the cue like you really feel it not like you don't at at a live event but it felt like so much more for this virtual stuff Um, and again there's no like venue costs to book in a rehearsal right and everybody's at home so it was like let's rehearse on this day great like we can actually do a full dress rehearsal for a show which you know most live shows a rehearsal is like somebody that just like comes up and is like okay is the mic working great the mic's working okay my slides working great cool like you know there's no actual you know, like rehearsal, rehearsal. So the slides cool. I handed I loved you it. five seconds before Ooh, I'm walking right. on stage. Exactly. Yep. Yep. Oh, and did I tell you there's video embedded in there? <laughs> <laughs> right. And we didn't get to 
test it because we because I'm just bringing it up to you. But let's. I just, know. Oh God. Fingers, it works. Nightmare thing. Yeah. It, and I like feel it in my body when something like that goes goes sideways. But I bet you guys do too. Um, what yeah. uh, you were talking about the days when you were like working nights and weekends in the warehouse. Uh, yes. but you've got you've got two awesome young kids at home and trying to like find balance and and space. What what are some of your I assume you're not nights and weekends in the warehouse anymore, but what's a typical day and what are your like rituals that like help ensure you get the time you need for yourself and your family? Totally. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll work backwards because uh, yeah. a typical day for me, like, you know, as a as a business owner for a small business, there's so many things that like looking at our finances and, I'm, yeah. you know, sometimes I'm like talking to staff and sometimes I'm, you know, helping on a client call. Sometimes I'm on a walkthrough. So in events, I don't know that there is a typical day. <laughs> is there a typical day? It's just crazy. Um, just depends on, on the week. But for like the family, um, my kids get off of school at like 3.30. So I, I pick them up. I'm the only one that can, but they it's a short walk. So that's like a time for me to just like stop and connect with them. And then we do jujitsu a couple days a week as a family. So I help in their class. It just like nice. at 5 p.m. helps me to cut off and like in their class, I'm focused. And then I get my exercise in afterwards after their class. So those are kind of rituals. And, you know, we like, I think the hard thing nowadays, the challenging thing for a lot of parents is just, screen time so mm-hmm. we've been really focused on saying okay you after school i needed to get some work done but you've been on the screen for an hour and a half like let's turn it off and let's play old maid or let's like do you know my kids are young enough that they that they're they're totally cool playing games with me and hanging out or even let's play mario party let's like play a video game together or watch a show together but like as long as we're not all just in a separate room just like looking at our own device staring like, staring at a flat digital device exactly i mean it's hard for everybody these days, but yeah, yeah. we've been doing our, our best to, to keep a focus on that. Yeah. I think the challenge, the big challenge about screens with little ones to, is the same as ours. Like they, everything is there, right? So it's, oh yeah, it's my shopping, it's my news, it's my social time with friends. It's, uh, it's also some very unhealthy habits and, yeah. and which ones are they, which ones are they tapping into? Is it a really cool learning program or is it like completely zoning out? Totally zoning out. I I, <laughs> yeah, I, am, I have the same problems myself. You know? <laughs> yes, of course, of course. Yeah, we all do. I feel like, yeah. So yeah, I, I, I think, you know, I make a concerted effort. I, I would have to say I wasn't so good at it in the early years of the business. I, I think when our son was born and you're, like I said, as an event parent, you can't, like you're so committed to a day and a time for this event to happen, for these things to happen that you can't just say, okay, I'm cutting my day off at X time. You know, sometimes you're just, you're working late, you're, you know. So, but once our second child came along, my wife was like, hey, something's gotta change. And that's when having a great team and like having those values and being able to trust people was really great because it freed me up from like, feeling like I needed to be in every, everything. Yeah, yeah. Well, and you were talking about being a business owner, then, you know, no one day is exactly the same. There is no typical because your attention needs to be on so many different things and you might get pulled into something or you're working on a project. So they were like, breathe and pull up from all of that for a minute. Oh, we're curious, like in the in the bigger picture, like what are you what are you curious about right now and what are you trying to learn? Yeah. Um, I think for me it's probably more sales and marketing. My business partner, like I, I just have to say like one of the many blessings in my life is my business partner and just like, you know, having different, a different skill set. So he's always been the salesperson and I've always been operations like behind the scenes, production, finance, you know, like HR kind of stuff. Just, but he's so good at sales that I could just like let it go and just be like, okay, you just do that. And I will, you know, focus on everything else. And that's a you know sales is such a huge part of a business if you don't have it you literally just like that's like you can have the best team you can have the best operations but if you don't have you know clients coming in the door then you're you've got nothing really so so yeah i mean your business will absolutely fail um so yeah so he's so good at that um but now that you know i'm like maturing and looking to figure out new things it would really be more about like and we're building this this new you know video production side right so i'm just right. thinking about like okay we, we were lucky to land some like big clients that we were just like thrown in our lap but 
how do we, how would I now go out and like get some new clients and, and like let people know that we're here, um, create, create relationships. Cause I feel like one of the things that's really helped us over time with Reducci event productions is that we just have a lot of like handshake relationships, you know, handshakes and hugs and like meeting people and just being out at events and working for them. And they're like, Hey, we like you. Let's like, let's do another event and let me refer to you. And I feel like events is such a referral based thing. Um, I, I feel like video production might be too, but there might be an opportunity to, to try sales and marketing on like um, in this new internet world, you know, yes. like we're maybe, maybe we're doing projects for companies in other states or other countries. And um, how do we expand our business to be not just a local like handshakes and hugs kind of business, but, but something that can be more nationally or internationally scaled. So fascinating. Yeah. Interesting questions to be asking yourself. And then, and then you get to that next level of, of growth and fear and pain, <laughs> or, <laughs> yes, but, exactly. you, but you've got all of these, all of these skills that your wife and your kids forced you to balance out. So you'll be able to apply that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's amazing. And also I, I think coming out of COVID, like knowing when to say no to has been a big thing. Like we've definitely turned down some jobs this year. Cause we're like, okay, no, that's going to, we're going to be crazy. It's going to make us, it's, it's going to make our next event suffer and we don't need to do that. You know, yes. we don't, we don't, we don't need to compromise um, somebody else's experience because we want to pick up one more, you know, event or, or whatever it is. And I'm betting that when you said yes to those things, if it was anything like the way we used to, you didn't, you didn't think you were going to compromise yourself or them. It was just like, yes, yes, yes. I want to be of service. Yeah. That sounds fun. Yeah. That's another project. Right. Good. I can, you know, guarantee that I'll be able to pay my warehouse workers for another couple of months. Exactly. And now it's, yeah, now you've got the bigger picture. You know, you'll be okay if you say no to that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we definitely changed like our team size. We did, we made adjustments around COVID like we had to, you know, we had to downsize a bit and that's actually been, you know, it's, it, although it was really hard, that's been one of the parts that's helped us manage a lot more is just to, you know, reduce the staff a little bit but then again not have such big overhead that we have to take that extra project squeeze it in on the day that we already have a couple of big projects or like you said we want like we can do it and then you get there and you're like oh my god didn't realize that we needed to like pack everything the day before and like you know you're just not thinking about that when you're in like go 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 sales mode right you're like yes what is this going to compromise and yes we'll find the staff and yes we'll get the gear and yes we'll do all that stuff and no matter what hardships it created for anybody else. So it's nice to be out of that, you know, that, that mode. That hustle and fear mode, for sure. Yeah, so it lets you exactly. do bigger, be even better and, and yeah, freeze you, freeze your brain up for much better things. That's a, exactly. great. It's a nice place to be. So yeah. let me ask you uh, my, my semi-final question, my penultimate question. Uh, who is somebody you really admire in the, in the business world? Yeah. I mean, first of all, I have to shout out like a big group of people, which is all of the folks that I met while I was in entrepreneurs organization. Yeah. I'll just name a few. Cause like all of my elders, I would say just like the guys that were maybe 10 years uh, in advance of me that were in my forum, like Corey and TJ and, um, you know, uh, Eric Tausig and like, you know, he, he's not on my forum, but just like those guys that were just like a little bit further than me, it just inspired me to like, oh, in 10 years, I could, I could be here. I could have a team that's like clicking and running and things can be going well. And, you know, I don't have to be struggling. Like if I, if I stick with it long enough and turn all the right keys, but I would say like my, you know, my biggest inspiration, um, you know, is, is my mentor is Victor Runamaker and he, oh, yeah. um, you know. What I, what I love about Victor is like, he's just so dedicated, not only to the business that like he, he started and grew, which, you know, he's brilliant. Like he's just a smart guy but to his family, to his community, to, you know, giving back. And, you know, I see that it keeps him really busy and sometimes, you know, I'm sure it's overwhelming for him, but just like every time I talk to him, I'm just inspired by like, and, and you're doing that, like, and you're you know, assistant scoutmaster, and you're on the board for this and you're, you know, and you're coaching your, your sons, you know, you're doing all of this stuff. It's just like, you know, that kind of like being inspired by people. Um, and again, yeah, like grew his business and sold it. And, you know, before the age of 50, like that's really inspiring for me. So, you know, when I think about like continuing to have the drive to move forward when things are hard or, um, you know, any of that, I think about him. 
And wow. she gave me this, gave me a couple of things. One of them, you know, you've probably seen it before. It's like everybody thinks that the at the path to success is like this straight line, but like in reality, it's like all of this <laughs> stuff that like gets you there. So yes, yeah. yes. I know the the other one that we show a lot in Accelerator that those same guys will reference is the one that looks like a a, a mountain range and there are valleys of death, right? You you get your business to a certain size and then and then yes. you're in the muck for a little while and then you get you you know you climb that next peak and it everything feels amazing and then you're in the muck for a little while uh yes. yeah, yeah. And, or they you know, keep calling it the valley of death which we know no it is to walk through but I, it is i've observed that first of all i want to shout out two more people which you know dan um coach dan, thank yeah. you yeah coach dan clifford yeah and merdad who was also my accelerator coach during COVID. So I'm going to say these names, Corey Levenberg and Nerada Frahi from 42 Inc., who are both, yeah, inspirations to me as well. T.G. Van Voorhees from uh, PCG, right? PCG? Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, Victor Nunemaker, I can't can't remember Victor's business name, but he's brilliant. Yeah, he was precision, concrete, cutting. But And he's, I mean, he's been an EO, like on the board of EO without having a business for like five years or something. He's like, that's how dedicated he is. I think that's why I'm like, he pours concrete, right? Uh, Yeah. yeah. I mean, all of these folks and Dan Clifford have all been, yeah, inspirations to me as well. And I think you're making me pause and appreciate how much I've learned from them. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And Eric Tausig. Don't forget Eric Tausig. I'm I'm super inspired by Eric. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. I mean, these are all folks who it's really good to have them in your orbit. Yeah. Totally. Oh yeah. my God. Yeah. So inspiring. So smart. Um, yeah. I love those guys. Super amazing. Well, thank you, Lawrence. We've uh, had a really great time talking to you. Where can people learn more about Verducci Event Productions? Verducci Event Productions. We're at www.wervep.com. Um, and we also have our new company that we're starting, Full Picture Media. It's going to be fully dedicated to video production for HR for medium and small, or sorry, medium and large businesses, um, values, employee recognition, recruiting, and, uh, and training tools. So yeah, we've got both businesses. They're, they're operating. We're still nice. serving clients and loving what we do. Say that new business name one more time. New business name is Full Picture Media, and that's www.fullpicturemedia.com. Fantastic. Great. Thank you so much for being here today. No problem. Thank you so much, Paige. It's great to be here. Thanks for listening to the Kennedy Events Podcast. Come back next time, and be sure to click subscribe to get future episodes.